Have you ever seen a cool astronomical event? Nope. Then this video is exactly for you. I will introduce you to the coolest astronomical events in 2023. In the past, I posted short videos on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube shorts about the top astronomical events in every month, and a lot of them went viral. But I also want to make a video about the top astronomical events in the whole year 2023 for you. You don't want to miss other videos about our endless universe? Then like and follow for more. First of all, you probably missed the biggest event in the whole year. I made a lot of short videos about the green comet which had its peak on February 2nd and you won't see this comet again in the next 50,000 years. But don't worry, there are other cool events this year. For example, you can see the full moon and the new moon every month. That's because the moon takes about a month to orbit Earth. As the moon moves around Earth, the amount of illumination it receives from the sun changes, creating the lunar phases. But there are even cooler events. On March 1st is the Venus-Jupiter conjunction. In astronomy, a conjunction occurs when a planet appears close to a moon, another planet, or a star. Conjunctions occur fairly frequently and have no profound astronomical significance, but they are nice to view. During the first few months of the year, the two brightest planets will begin to converge in the southwestern sky, and on March 1st, they will reach their closest points to each other. You should be able to see both with your bare eyes, and you can also see them in the same field of view with even the tiniest backyard telescope. Though the two will appear relatively close, they are actually millions of miles apart. Look west to southwest at dusk to see the two planets together. On April 11th, it is the best time to view Mercury since it will be at its highest point above the horizon in the evening sky. Look for the planet low in the western sky just after sunset. On April 15th to April 29th is the Lyrid meteor shower. This year's shower will peak on the night of April 22nd, and the viewing conditions will be favorable. The waxing crescent moon will only be 6% illuminated. Observers are usually able to see about 18 meteors per hour in a clear, dark sky, though on very rare occasions, the Lyrids can surprise viewers with as many as 100 meteors in an hour. Meteor showers occur when the Earth passes through debris left behind from comets and asteroids, which is why they occur at around the same time each year. The Lyrids originate from the comet Thatcher, which orbits the Sun about every 415 years. And we have another meteor shower in this month, because on April 15th to May 27th is the ETA Aquarid Meteor Shower. This shower is known for its fast meteors that leave long, glowing trails. ETA Aquarid meteors can travel at about 148,000 miles per hour into Earth's atmosphere, according to NASA. Their radiant, or the point from which they appear, is the constellation Aquarius. These meteors come from the comet Halley, which completes an orbit around the Sun about once every 76 years. This comet also produces the Orionid meteor shower, which occurs in October. Halley was last seen by casual observers in 1986 and is projected to make another appearance in 2061. This year's ETA Aquarids will peak the night of May 5th to May 6th. Unfortunately, the full moon will appear on May 5th, 2023, but don't let that deter you. A significant outburst with meteors raining down at twice their usual rate could occur. These meteors are best viewed in the southern hemisphere, but they can also be seen north of the equator at a usual rate of about 10 to 30 per hour in good conditions. On June 4th is the best time to view Venus since it will be at its highest point above the horizon in the evening sky. Look for the bright planet in the western sky after sunset. On July 14th to September 1st is the Perseid meteor shower. The Perseid meteor shower is one of the best of the year. Bright, frequent meteors with long tails will light up the sky at rates of about 50 to 100 per hour. The shower happens as Earth passes through debris left behind by the comet Swift-Tuttle, and it peaks as the Earth moves through the densest portion. Last year's Perseids coincided with the full moon, making some shooting stars difficult to see. But this year, the shower will reach its spectacular peak to days before the new moon on August 11th and 12th. On August 31st, you can see a super blue moon. Those looking at the sky on the night of August 31st may notice that the full moon appears slightly larger and brighter than usual. 
That's because the moon will be the closest in its elliptical orbit to Earth, making it a supermoon. Four supermoons will appear in a row this year on July 3rd, August 1st, August 31st, and September 29th. Because the month of August will see two full moons, the second is considered a blue moon. Blue moons happen every 2.5 years, and the last one occurred in August 2021. On September 26th to November 22nd is Orionids. The Orionids are not typically as strong as the Perseids, or the Geminids, but they are still worth watching. From a dark location, viewers can see about 10 to 20 meteors per hour at the shower's peak, which falls around the morning of October 22nd. Like the ETA Aquarids, this shower comes from the comet Halley and is named after the English astronomer Edmund Halley. He was the first to calculate the comet's orbit, accurately predicting its return in 1758, 16 years after his death. This year, the moon will set by midnight on the peak night, providing little interference to viewers who look up in the early hours of the morning. While the meteors appear to originate from the constellation Orion the Hunter, you will be able to see shooting stars anywhere in the sky. On October 14th, you can see an annular solar eclipse. Solar eclipses occur when the moon passes between the Earth and the Sun. But because the moon won't entirely cover the Sun this year, a dazzling glowing circle, or a ring of fire, will be visible from certain locations. Such an annular solar eclipse can last for up to 12 minutes and 30 seconds. On October 28th, you can see a partial lunar eclipse. A total lunar eclipse occurs when the Earth's shadow obscures the entire surface of the Moon, while a partial eclipse takes place when the Moon passes only partly through Earth's dark shadow. A third type of eclipse called a penumbral lunar eclipse is more subtle and occurs when the Earth's fainter outer shadow, called the penumbra, is cast on the Moon. On November 3rd, the giant Jupiter will be at its closest approach to Earth and its face will be fully illuminated by the Sun. It will be brighter than any other time of the year and will be visible all night long. This is the best time to view and photograph Jupiter and its moons. A medium-sized telescope should be able to show you some of the details in Jupiter's cloud bands. A good pair of binoculars should allow you to see Jupiter's four largest moons appearing as bright dots on either side of the planet. On November 13th, the ice giant Uranus will be at its closest approach to Earth and its face will be fully illuminated by the Sun. It will be brighter than any other time of the year and will be visible all night long right as Jupiter. This is the best time to view Uranus. Due to its distance, it will only only appear as a tiny blue-green dot if you watch it with your naked eyes. And last but not least, on November 19th to December 24th is the Geminid meteor shower. The Geminids are another fan favorite and one of the last meteor showers of the year. This shower is known for its speedy meteors. They can travel 78,000 miles per hour, more than 40 times faster than a speeding bullet. The most meteors are predicted to rain down on the nights of December 13th and 14th, with the possibility of stargazers seeing 120 meteors per hour. Last year's waning gibbous moon resulted in only about 30 to 40 visible meteors per hour in the northern hemisphere. But a young waxing crescent moon will set early in the evening this year on the peak, providing a dark sky for observers. Okay, that was a lot of information. Let me summarize it for you to screenshot. See you again.